After winning the national championship on Tuesday, Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh advocated for players' rights, calling unionization the next step. The thing I would change about college football is to let the talent share in the ever-increasing revenue, he said. We're all riding the same train, and the ones that are in the position to do the heavy lifting, the ones that risk life and limb out there on the football field, are the players. And not just football players, student athletes. The organizations are fighting hard to keep all the money. The universities, the NCAA, the conferences, and it's long past time to let the student athletes share in the ever-increasing revenue. There needs to be a voice for the young people, for the student athletes. Right now, there is no voice. I mean, there are armies of attorneys, and I've seen them at the NCAA. I've seen them at universities, the conferences. And then if they need more firepower, they go out and hire tall building law firms to get more. But there's no voice for the student athletes, and it just needs to change. That's a wrong that needs to be righted. I was amazed to hear such a clear and concise argument for uh for uh you know uh, providing <laughs> uh, compensation for these student athletes from someone who is like as as big and well known as Jim Harbaugh, I was floored reading this. And these stats aren't going to surprise anybody. But I looked it up for the show that the NCAA generated just short of a billion dollars of revenue last year, like nine hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, in thirty one of fifty states, the highest paid state employee is a college football coach. A football coach, like that's just that's just football coaches. Thirty one of them. Uh, Nick Saban, who just retired uh, this year, his contract was eleven point seven million dollars a year. Eighty uh, percent of the highest earning public employees are college head coaches, and uh, the top ten highest state employees at college uh, universities uh, coaches earn an average of $9.8 million. And then there's a stat that kind of rolled my eyes out here. It's like just two of these people are, are females. Like, oh, okay, look, it wouldn't be better if half of them were female, all right? It's still be a fucking problem. But it's, it's like That's the not more the point. It's not the point. It's like the more female prison guards thing. But yeah. um, anyway, this is, this is like, it's such a painfully obvious thing that I, I think, we, in fact, I think one of my first shows I did on here with you guys was about this very topic. We were talking about uh, NIL and everything and how mm. players can, you know, start making money. Uh, but I think I think Harbaugh is correct. Shocker. I know that, you know, the players should be uh, paid more money. But I'd like to see what your thoughts on here, John. Like, like what, what do you have to add here and uh, Harbaugh's insights? And are you surprised to hear that from some from someone uh, like him? I well, first of all, no, I'm not surprised to hear that from someone like him because this isn't even like the first time he's talked about this. I didn't know it, that. Okay. This is actually a really funny. I'm pretty sure what he was at Stanford, right? I'm I'm pretty sure he went, oh, I can't he went remember. From, pretty sure he went from Stanford to the Niners to Michigan. Um, but he I think it was Stanford. Um, but it was a former player of his at his previous um college destination. And they, they tweeted out how like, oh yeah, th this isn't the first time like he used to talk to us about unionization all the time. Like oh, he, that's so he, he cool. would encourage us to unionize. But here's the funny part. The reason he was doing it was because th there were rules about they can only have 20 hours of practice time a week. Oh, and he wanted them to unionize <laughs> to, an <laughs> angel to fight for more practice hours, which is such it's such a college football coach. That's thing. great. Like it's, that's um, great. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 perfect. But you know, I that's not to take away from the fact no. that organization should be. Uh, it's just maybe not for the most you know that's more, hilarious uh, upstanding reasons. Um, <laughs> but I do think it's funny. But I do think that this issue is so interesting because it it checks a lot of the boxes, right? It is involving popular media. Um, you know, it, it's things that are popular to normally Americans, college football. You know, a name like Jim Harbaugh that like, you know, I, I would imagine maybe 70 percent of Americans recognize that's a I'm pulling that number out of my ass just to guess. Everyone but, who watches sports knows his name. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's a very famous person. It, and it, it at least the NCAA, like most Americans, I think, follow some amount of collegiate sport at some point mm -hmm. in their lives. You know, it's something that you're, you're familiar with. Um, and it is such a clear example of the I'll call it the hypocrisies of conservatism. Um, and you have this, the argument for as long as I remember um, has always been, oh, these are amateur athletes. We need to maintain the uh, values of amateurism and yada, yada. It's very traditional, you know, call it a tradition argument. And it's so plain and obvious, stupid. Like when you see the amount of money that although this shit is making, it's like, well, that would make sense if 
the organization wasn't making billions of dollars, but it is. So like, shouldn't the athletes like get some of that money? You know, like, like, like it just makes it to the most basic normie has never heard any, that's the, 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 the concept of class struggle has never gone through their brain. They can look at that and go, well, yeah, that doesn't make any fucking sense. The the value of the scholar that was the other thing when I was growing up. It was like, oh, yep. well, the, the the scholarship, that's their pay. And it's like, yeah, but that's the the, the math still ain't math in here. I no. I might not have a college degree, but I can tell that the value <laughs> of that scholarship is not equal to the money that is being made. And what you brought up there with the college coaches being the highest paid public uh servants um is like yeah no that doesn't make any sense if if the free market is determining the pay of these public uh employees to be more than the people we pay to i don't know keep us safe from disease like it it doesn't make sense that the athletes wouldn't also be able to, to, to pay so it is such a great intro point for a lot of people especially the sort of red blooded, uh, you know, American loving college football, uh, SEC conservatives. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, um, cut that out, Justin. Um, the the uh, um, th these people who should be with us in the class war, you know, who who should be with us. It is such a great talking point to talk to them about because I think that when I was a kid, a lot of them just towed the line. Whereas now, the amount of money being talked about is so absurd that you can't say with a straight face that these students don't get to be shouldn't have a part of it. And it's going to make a lot of those, you know, red blooded conservative Americans start to become pro union because, as I've said many times, unionization is a very free market economic principle. Um, that like most everyone in the working class should agree with. And for, somehow Republicans have had the veil over their, their voting base's eyes and Amazingly. not had them understand that. But things like this is where it starts to crumble, where it is very public facing about something they care about um, that, you know, maybe they even value more than God is their college football team. So like <laughs> that's, I, I think that I want to talk about this all day long because it, it really is one of those things that can start to change people's minds in America. I don't, again, maybe I'm being overly optimistic. No, it's like, PJ? so I think it's, once again, I, I, a lot of this, like, honestly, like 80% of our conversations are broken down, can be really separated into like a generational view of the world. And mm -hmm. that I, so when I was a kid, I remember, you know, learning this, that, you know, oh, college athletes, you know, they don't get paid. Co colleges, you know, make shit loads of money off of this stuff. And adults would always talk about how important it was to maintain yep. the sanctity of amateur sports. And I was like, why? I, why what's so goddamn important about that? And I uh, I remember, and uh, they would say, it's like in the Olympics too, I remember like they wouldn't let NBA players play in the Olympics. So the dream team, and I was like, well, because they're not amateurs. Like, who gives a shit if they're amateurs? Like, why, why is that so important? And uh, I, so I've never been enamored with this idea mm -hmm. of amateurism and why it's like, no, like these guys are producing like some of the highest level of football in the, the country. The suffering They're, is the point, PJ. It's the, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's, I never got it. I never understood it. And, uh, and uh, I also like, this is kind of a, a side, but I want to bring it up uh, just by how older people look at sports in general in that they really believe that, and it was probably uh, due to the fact that company loyalty meant something to them you know growing mm -hmm. growing up that yeah, you, know, you yeah. same same place for 40 years and then you got your pension and shit but i remember this is actually pretty recent uh, so, uh considering but you remember the decision with lebron james yep. and uh people were so fucking mad at lebron james just just in now i get if you're in cleveland being mad i get <laughs> yeah. that okay you lost your best player that you've ever seen that, that you will ever see in the city i get that everyone else what the fuck are you bitching about? Like yeah. this guy decided, hey, I want to go to Miami and play with my friends and you're pissed. Why? Mm -hmm. Like, what does it matter to you? And I would always I say that, listen, if you had a general manager who worked out great trades to bring like three all-stars to your team, you would throw a parade in his honor. But if the players decide to do it themselves, they are persona non grata. That doesn't make sense. Like, like why? Like, you're not allowed to do that. And like, there's this like 
this this just antagonism against people exercising you know uh their own will against a, a sports team or mm -hmm. like when a player holds out on a contract it's like listen if you're an nfl player trying to get money yeah hold out on that fucking contract because they want you to be loyal to the team but the second you break your leg that team's cutting you loose you're not mm -hmm. getting it done it's done like why and so even more so, this applies to college sports because you weren't getting paid a cent. And you and this would this would actually it's funny when you're well not funny when you talk about like the coaches and everything. This argument wouldn't be it would already be absurd, but it would be a little bit less absurd if the coaches were making eighty grand a year, <laughs> like, uh -huh. coach, right? Like if your coach was just getting paid a normal job to coach football. But no, the guy you go see. And who's like making you do, you know, hundred yard sprints? The guy uh -huh. telling you when to take your ice baths. The guy like tell, he's making he's a millionaire. Like this man is lives in a mansion on the nice side of town. You are lifting weights four hours a day and running and like brutalizing your body for nothing. You know, mm -hmm. for nine dollars in per diem every day when you travel. And this guy is a literal millionaire. There is no defending that, like none whatsoever. And that's just the coach, not just the university making shit loads of money. But my, I, I think I've said this before, it won't surprise you, but my position on this is that, yeah, the players should get paid, but honestly, this shouldn't be a college activity at all. It shouldn't. Like, let's, who are we fooling here? This is semi-pro football. That's what it is. So just make it a semi-pro league. Just, just do it. Like, hey, you want to play at this level? You get paid X amount of dollars. It has nothing to do with going to school. And it's so fun. I didn't know that about Jim Harbaugh, the unionization. But listen, he's right, though. <laughs> it's like, this is essentially a job. Like, we have this facade that it's a uh, that it's this, uh, you know, amateur activity for the love of the game. No, fuck you. That's not what it is. Why are we pretending this? Like, have them unionize, have them work. They can work. They can work out with the coach as much as they want and pay them. Like, like, quit tying it to them. You know, going to physics class. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm going to disagree with you there because I remember you didn't mention that before when we talked about. Oh before, yeah. And I, I I thought about it since then, mm -hmm. and I think as if I were to create a world from scratch, I would agree with you. That doesn't quite make sense. Um and. Uh, at the risk of being called a traditionalist, I do think there is some value in the tradition. And it's not for the tradition's sake, but because that is all sports is just made up bullshit. Like it's just yeah. made up allegiances. We're rooting for the laundry. Like and it, it and I do think there's a lot of value. Like there's a lot of personal value in in sports fandom. There's a lot of value in I, you know, participating in sports. I, I think sports bring a lot of very good things to society. And the fandom, the laundry being rooted for is the colleges. Like that just can't, maybe in the long term that can change, but like in the span of a single human lifetime, I, I don't think that that could be completely changed overnight. Mm -hmm. Right. So like that's what's being rooted for. And I do think it actually does provide value to the educational system at least because I went to a not football school. I went to Hofstra University. We used to have a football team and we don't, we did not when I went there. Um, and I saw the impact because I, I had people who, you know, were, were maybe graduates telling me about how the school used to be when we had a football team versus how it is now. I had friends who went to big state school, you know, Penn state, Alabama, you know, whatever these big football schools. And I could tell the difference in our experiences. And there was so much more campus community, um, and, uh, you know, mixing between the different schools at the university, because mm -hmm. of the football team or you know i'm sure it's like north carolina would be the basketball team or whatever but like it provides a lot of value in exposing you to different people increasing your bond between you know the different people in the university which does pay off later in your life with networking and everything like it definitely provides value of some sort to tie these two things together and I just think it, it is more fun of a college experience. Um, it's it's better for the people who are doing it if there's a if there is a significant sports presence at the college. But uh, I, I forget exactly where I was going with that. That's just where I disagree with you. Well, on, no, it's like uh, so that way. you don't have to get rid of sports and colleges altogether. You, uh -huh. know, you can still have sports. I mean, yeah, you're right. Sports. Uh, I love sports. Like, for example, like. I'm not advocating that they get rid of like high school sport. You don't have to. Like, it's fine. You can play sports, but 
you know, this, the level that they're playing on the NCAA, it is a joke to call it amateur football. It, it mm-hmm. is like, it's not like 1905, you know, when, you know, uh, football just started and there's no forward pass and shit like that. And it's just Harvard guys playing against the Yale guys. And it's just actual amateur shit. That's not what it is anymore. So yeah, yeah like sports, like sports and community, I'm all fine with that. But, you know, like, I'm not saying that, you know, high school sports or anything like it's a, well, that's the comparison that it's not at a high enough level that it really matters. But yeah. at this level, when like you're picking pro athletes from this, come on, like get the fuck out of here. Like, like make that its own league. I don't know how you would do that. Like, to be fair, I don't have a plan I, to put that in place. Well, I, I do think that like every single big D1 sports program has a rec team like an amateur team that's sitting right mm-hmm. behind them at the university that could serve that purpose i i i think that is very true um but i, I think it should just be tied to the school i think it improves the product it's mm-hmm. fun for the fans whatever um but i do agree with you. if i was starting from scratch yeah i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't tie these two things together because it doesn't I, make any sense i've always thought it was weird and because i was uh i used to love i still i i, I love sports growing up like i I would uh, I'd have like stats memorized, you know, mm-hmm. and everything, all the shit going. On. And I would study the history of like of these events. And it was really weird to me to read that like in the 30s, 40s, and 50s that college football was way bigger than pro football. Like college football was a. And I was like, really? Like that? That yeah. was, it was astounding to me to even think about that. But uh, but you're right, because like it's kind of like uh, people's allegiances to like their team of that, you know, that mm-hmm. they went to school at or something. I kind of get that. It's kind of like a, like, I don't much care for women's basketball. I, I don't, I don't like it that much or whatever, mm-hmm. but I will watch like uh, on it. When I did watch sports, I don't watch sports at all anymore. But when I would watch the NCAA tournament, I always enjoyed watching the women's NCAA tournament because the passion was so mm-hmm. strong. You, you could feel it through the TV. So I get it. Like like sports, sports is something that does unite people. It's why the Olympics are so uh, successful in that it's it's kind of weird too, because like I think the reason sports work is because we're uh we are <laughs> we are at our core a rather violent species and sports is just ritualized combat. That's all it is. Like mm-hmm. we we have, you dominate and you win, and that's kind of our exercise to get it out there. So you're right. There there is a lot of value to it. And uh, we just happen to live in like the 130th year of us putting all of the stock into college sports and getting rid of it at, you know, any time, you know, severing it quickly. Yeah, you're right. That would be pretty difficult. But that's that's my ideal world. But something's got to be done about this fucking charade that these, this is not essentially a, a pro league that they're they're like ripping people off. I, I, I just don't get it all. Well, the, and I think that sports actually is one of my favorite things to make metaphors about in the political realm because i think sports provides something for everyone um Mm -hmm. you know you have the rugged individualism in sports it has to exist you yeah the the self-help style you know conservative pundit um of like you know work harder you'll be successful in life you know blah 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 that exists in sports like that that mm-hmm. that exists and is clearly exemplified in the, yep. the way that these athletes have to work and prepare in order to win over their opponent at the highest levels but you know what also exists in sports pure goddamn socialism like mm-hmm. it is su- it, it, at least in team sports like you go on a football team and like you're constantly making sacrifices for the person next to you. You're constantly, you know, having to adopt this communal mindset of team success over individual success. You and and if you look at the most successful sports leagues, they're fucking commies. Like, like you look at the NFL; it is one of the best examples of like socialism in a private company you'll ever fucking see because a large portion of the revenue goes towards the players, like much larger. The, the workers in general, but like the players specifically, because of the power that they have. They're unionized, they work together, and they get the amount of money that they actually probably fucking deserve, you know, very close to it um, because of all of that solidarity and standing together. Um, and But you still have that hyper-individualistic hyper-indiv- success yeah. that will call out to- toward the normies, the conservatives. It is popular. People understand it. Everyone played a sport and they get it. And when you see how successful that allows them to be, because, oh, all of the NFL teams 
they're pretty good parody and it's great to watch every single Sunday. And these people really get the you you maximize the ability of these people by doing that. Whereas looking at, you know, international soccer, if you follow that as an American, um, it's not like that at all. Like it's just fucking bullshit. College is another example. <laughs> no one no one's getting paid in college, you know, but like the amount of money that Alabama has to throw around is very different than the amount of money that, uh, I don't know, North Carolina has to throw around. And North Carolina ain't ever beating Alabama because of it. And it just makes for a bad product any, any yeah. given week if you follow a single team. And I, I think that a lot of these principles that we talk about with solidarity, with unionization, um, with uh, working class people sticking together and and putting the needs of the team above the individual and the American concepts of rugged individualism and you know working hard for success all coalesce into sports. And I and I want this conversation to be had more and more and more. I was actually disappointed that these comments by Harbaugh didn't gain more popularity because it is such a great wedge issue to kind of separate, the 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 philosoph the philosophy from the political parties and go like oh yeah no that that doesn't make any sense we should be paying the college athletes they should unionize even if i'm a red-blooded republican i'm probably going to agree with that eventually yeah sports also it plays a it's a good a microcosm of the convergence of teamwork and meritocracy and mm. that uh so like for a long time for, jesus like 50 years, the the that you you couldn't find black quarterbacks because mm -hmm. you know, well, sure, black folks, you know, they they can run fast and they're high steppers and everything, but they don't have the brains to be uh -huh. a quarterback. That was like that was like standard knowledge for mm -hmm. decades, and it's like oh, now half, half the quarterbacks in the NFL are black. That would have been unimaginable, you know, 30 years ago. And it's like oh yeah, you get on the field, you work hard, and you prove okay. Turns out that's bullshit. And what you also mentioned about the NFL with uh, they also do like the the best example of like this uh, with a revenue share is the team's uh ownership themselves with uh television uh mm, revenue yeah. is that you know it doesn't matter who you are you are like they are splitting that television revenue the cowboys get the same revenue that the packers do that the chargers do like it doesn't matter how often you're on tv you're spreading that money around because it makes for a better product and you don't end up with some like a uh, you know, like what's a I don't know, like the Pittsburgh Pirates of like the mm. two thousand. Oh, oh shit! I didn't realize how close to home that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I over in Philly. I don't care about. The oh, Philly. Okay, never mind then. Okay, that's fine. But I remember how, how bad the Pirates were and everything like that. But mm. yeah, sports is a great example of you know the human condition because you know individually, as impressive as any one person is, they're not that impressive. There's only so much human beings can do by themselves. Like our strength is in our uh, ability to work together and to uh, try to accomplish things uh, uh, as a species or as a community rather than, you know, by yourself, which is which is our entire message here on the left wing. And uh, if you agree with that, and you should, let us know, you know, uh, exactly why you believe that and try to get the word on this. But we appreciate you guys watching and uh, enjoy your day.